Coming up on today's show, we've got the final part uh, looking at the hind call. This is the HE 111 build, the Monster 132nd Revel kit. So that one finished on Monday, so we'll be quick look at that one. Part seven of the Meng, uh, this is the Ford F350 that's given us so many nightmares. It continues uh, with part seven, so we'll be having a look at that one. Started on the Kitty Hawk Jaguar. Yes, it's as bad as we all thought. Um, there's a few fit issues, I say a few, I think there's a fewer non-fit issues, but we'll be looking at that one. Ben Morgan's uh, done a special for us on the Gundam uh, model kits and an overview of that particular genre. Definitely something that seems to be sort of getting everyone's attention uh, on the site recently, so we'll be having a look at that. Kit reviews this week, we've got the F-104, not the 105 as I describe it, <laughs> the 104 Starfighter from Eddard. Uh, grab this kit whilst you can, it's fantastic. Also we've got the Meng Bradley, we've got the uh, M3 A3 version. We'll be having a detailed look around the forum, uh, we'll be looking at some of your work and your builds currently going on with the group builds and six, plus all the other news and gossip. Hi, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Good old week this week. Um, Monday, we pushed on with the last part of the actual uh, HE 111 going up. Um, as I said, I've got a little bit bogged down with this one we spoke about last week, but now it's done and finished. And I do enjoy it having it here, but unfortunately it is a little bit too big. So that's why it's going to be auctioned off for charity. We'll speak about that uh, a little bit later on in the show. But you can watch the last part of this one, which talks about the final, we do our pigment scrub on it, just to give it some more dirtiness and to, you know, give it some more of this work all over it. And the other side as well, we speak about, and we put the aerial on, if I remember rightly, by using the old knitting in elastic and some silver. Um, as I say, I'm I'm glad it's out of the way. From my point of view, um, we spoke about it before, I know I'm recapping a bit, but I, it's not my scale. I don't mind doing 130 second stuff if I'm just doing that, but having lots of things on the go, it took up far too much room on the bench for me. Uh, and probably why it killed my mojo with that one, got really bogged down in the middle of it. But now it's done and just sat here, it looks lovely. And everybody comes in, speaks about it. They're like, oh wow, look at that. So if you want the wow factor, that's it. You've all got a chance to win this in a raffle. We are definitely gonna do a raffle after last week. I asked which uh, your opinions. So it looks like we're gonna do a raffle system as well as you know various other things gonna go in. But I said, I'll speak about that later on in the show anyway. Uh, Tuesday we had the live show, uh, me and Sid, um, again we had a small technical hitch, uh, as I say I've completely remodelled the studio in here, over there now is like almost the media centre as it's being called, or the man cave, um, the other big computer has been brought down and it's completely hardwired into the system now for the internet, um, and we've got multiple monitors and everything going on over there now, uh, basically the way we have is a fail safe, if the LAN system packs up for whatever reason. Instead of it just cutting you off, it then goes onto a Wi-Fi uh, signal um, as a, a backup, okay? So, and then once that goes down, it will go back to being on the LAN and various things. Somewhere between us talking to probably Steve before we went on air and stuff and like that, it clicked over. But we get no warning apart from the tiniest little icon down in the bottom of the tool tray uh, for Windows. So unfortunately, I didn't spot it. Uh, and it's only when you guys were saying, mm, the image quality is a bit bad and the sound's a bit wobbly, uh, that we spotted it and then flicked it back onto LAN. And as we know, it's a faster connection, uh, being a 200 megabit connection, and then we have no problem with it. But anyway, we seem to get over the problem. The show itself went very well. Thank you for all your questions as always. Remember, me and Sid will be back on on Tuesday. Uh, we'll probably get some of the guys in as well um, and everything else like that. So I think we might even have John in with us on Tuesday. I think he's coming down for that one. So um, it should be a good old news show. Remember, if you're non-members, I have been putting them up onto our YouTube page and linking it to the Facebook page as well so you can watch them. Obviously not live. I usually put them up about a week afterwards. Uh, and everything else like that. So it's like three and a half hours, I think we were on air last week. Uh, so it's like, a, it's like a, a light hearted news show, so to speak, with all your questions. So there we go, that went really, really well. Um, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, the last part of the main, well, penultimate part of the main truck has gone up. There's one more part to go on there. Yes, it's still fighting me. Now the paint's fine, although it's still wet. Um, I couldn't get the truck bed onto this thing. It was an absolute nightmare fitting this thing down and on. It just didn't want to go full stop. Um, and then 
if you're watching this as you'll see that I turn off the camera because I'm you know fighting with it I can't just leave the camera rolling and watch you lot struggle uh, with me for this one for a couple of hours literally five minutes after the cameras went off I'm still fiddling with it and then something just dropped in and it fitted fine no problem at all but at the time it was a complete you know bit of a, a mare to, to get it in um, needless to say it's in there's one more part to go up after this one is that a hair on the inside I think it is um, but uh, I did enjoy it. The kit itself was absolutely fantastic. No problem with that at all. Just the paintwork point of view, I know I can do it better, quicker, and in quarter of the amount of time I spent messing around with all that damn alkaline stuff and all the rest of it. Not only does it stink, it's nasty, it's horrible stuff. It took forever to dry. It didn't give as good finish as to what I can get with an acrylic, I don't think, uh, and everything else like that. So from my point of view, it's not a thing I'm gonna be rushing back to do quickly. Um, definitely doing cars, still gonna do my Formula One, still wanna do a bike this year uh, and everything else like that. But I'll be using my paints and my techniques for doing it instead of trying, obviously with the alkalides and things like that. But generally, it went on really, really well. The kit itself is a fantastic kit. So you've got one more part of that to go up. That's going to go up on Monday, and that will complete that build, uh, and then we're done. So what that frees us up to is start on the Jaguar. So yes, this is the Kitty Hawk Jaguar, the 148th Wonder. It's as bad as everyone's saying, I'll be honest with you. Um, we've, we've got probably two parts already uh, filmed. Um, we've gone along and uh, we've detailed up, obviously, the electronics base. I'm gonna have this one open. It just seems a shame to close it all up when it's all here. Um, we've got a color photo etch set going in here as well, which has done our cockpit, which is lovely, and our little seat, which can probably fit in here now. If I'm getting it in, come on damn you, get in there. So that is together, but to be honest, I've had fit issues after fit issues and things not going in, the design, the gear's got to go in so early. You have to put the wheels in, uh, the gear in now because there's no way of getting them in a little bit later on, which means you've got god awful things, legs hanging out that are just begging to be snapped off now throughout the entire of the build. And we've got to mask up and go round them all. Instead of putting the doors on and we can just um take the doors off afterwards we'll be all right but it's little things it's even the location tabs when you put it together which i can't even get it together there we go we get a massive gap there's probably like a quarter of a mil gap running down here and that's because the locating tabs don't go together so it's easier to cut them all off and just go in blind and put it together yourself but needless to say fit issue after fit issue this back rear plate didn't go together at all i couldn't get the seat system doesn't fit you have to take some of the height out so it's well worth watching this one if you're going to actually be planning on building this particular kit um you know nose weight i'm sure it needs it so i've put some in but it doesn't mention it in the instructions uh, and everything else and we talk about in this one rescribing i've done the wing section on it shown how to rescribe it we use our gump for doing that one as well to make seamless uh, and putting in the pins and everything else back in there so if you ever going to be thinking about building this kit god help you but if you are have a watch of this video because hopefully i'll get rid of all those problems and show you them so you know what you've got install shall we say um, and you can deal with them straight away instead of fighting with it like i've had to do with this entire build but part one of this one will be up next week probably going to be on the wednesday as i say i'm going to get pile through the build of this one i hope to have it done early part of next week and then i'm going to be starting on the sherman as well so i can paint them both together but obviously you'll be pushing right the way through with that one so as i said it's coming together very very quickly i hope to have it all together by next week early next week and then we can push on with paint probably the week after because i don't imagine the sherman's going to take particularly tons of time to get together but that one is literally coming right up after one this is the easy eight uh i've got it half all ready to go so I'll be starting on this one mid next week, pushing right the way through on that one and getting it through. For those of you who've been asking about the actual um, photo etch demo, this is why it's all here. I intend to do this after I finish filming and editing today, uh, this afternoon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start recording that. To be honest, I've been waiting for a little bit of flux and some tools uh, to come in to show you about putting photo etch together the do's, the don'ts, um, the easier way, the shortcuts, things like that. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously doing circle things and those types of areas. So it is all here. That's gonna be up next week as a standalone. It's probably gonna be maybe a one hour special on using photo etch. Uh, and I'm gonna cover everything right the way through to priming and painting it uh, and things like that. Cause I know lots of you have problems painting photo etch. So I'm gonna show you about doing that as well. 
So that will be up probably oh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday next week as well. So that'll be a little bit of a standalone for that one. But I intend to do that this afternoon whilst you lot are rendering and on your way up to YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, we've got to thank Ben Morgan has done a fantastic job of for us on Gundam um, models. This is obviously the sci-fi. I don't know if you call it sci-fi. I suppose it is sci-fi. Um, you know, uh, these are like the robo uh, robotic um, models, figures, sci-fi genre. It's massive. It's huge, especially in the Far East, Japan, uh, and things like that. I don't know anything about it whatsoever. Steve um, Sutcliffe uh, had a chat with him, various things, asked him to put up a, a sort of detailed what is, how is, and all the rest of it. So that is up on the site now. So it's well worth having a look. There's videos linked onto it as well from a lot from Hobby Link Japan because they're well into it over there and know all the different genres and subcultures and everything from it. He's done an incredibly detailed thing. So if you've ever had a what if and I'm a little bit interested in, go and have a look at this particular post. We have I've pinned it and I'm going to put it onto the main site today as well so by the time you get this it'll be on the main site as well so big thank you to uh, Ben for doing that for us because as I said I'm well out of my league I have no idea about that one at all so as I said have a look at that one big thanks for Ben for doing it for us this week we had two new reviews go up on the site we had the fantastic this is the Eddard um, have reboxed the Hasegawa F104 yes I know it's 104 I don't know why I didn't edit it out normally I just audio edit out me saying 104 from 105 and stuff like that but this time I left it in for some unknown reason um, it's amazing kit you've got the best f104 with the best parts that go with it those resin seats are absolutely beautifully detailed and everything else like that it's a great kit panic not for you guys who haven't got it apparently they are bringing out the NATO version which will be the Italian version and things like that rather than obviously the German version here so there is going to be another version of this one coming out in a month or two time okay but if you can grab it grab this kit because it is going like hen's teeth and that means it's going to be stupid money on Fleabay all right but it is the best f104 kit there is out there it's the Hasegawa kit I've built loads of them they go together great lovely detail great accuracy and everything else like that with all the best bits so you've got a fantastic color photo etch set that's going to go in there you've actually got the best resin seats so obviously you've got the nato and the us version of the seats in there as well if you don't want to do the us version and the decals and the markings absolutely brilliant because they're all done by cartographed um, so it's the best of the best of the best so as i pointed out in the review some of the earlier reboxes shall we say i've always said they've used the second best kits out there um, like using the academy F-15s over like Ravel's F-15E and Hasegawa's F-15C. Uh, I always imagine that like, they were the second place kit. This time they've gone straight to Hasegawa and got the best kit as well. So definitely go and get that one. Uh, we also had the Bradley. Uh, this is the M3A3 with the Busk um, system all over it. Um, I've reviewed that one. It's an amazing kit. It looks fantastic. And as you're going to see in a moment, there's a couple of the members doing versions with this kit as well. Uh, and it is a phenomenal kit. I'm hoping to build this one if the video vote goes our way, um, because it is up for a video vote at the moment if you want me to see it building it. The tracks as well, I play and put them together on this. These are the click together versions instead of pins and all those horrible things. I can confirm it does work. I did it. And then after the video, I did a few more. Got carried away. Uh, so I've done like half a length now, about 40 together and they are fantastic just clean up the tracks a little bit just don't hack them off and stick them together clean up the parts it's well worth it and they do not fall apart if you want to take them apart it takes quite a bit of work so probably the best tracks that i've seen out there certainly are far better ones than we were playing with the t90 with the pins and all that horrible thing that goes with it so you can see both those reviews they're up there at the moment they're about sort of 14 minutes i think on that one this one's a good old one at 20 minutes long so they are up right below here if you're watching this on flory models if you're on youtube they're down in the review section on that as well or if not they are on our facebook page as well so plenty of ones going on with there got to mention we've got um the prize draw is going to finish this time next week well no saturday actually a day past i'm thinking we're a little bit ahead remember members get in there put your name down in the prize draw count me in all your bits and pieces and we'll get you down in there as well speaking of things like that we just come back to it thank you for all the feedback we had on the actual um what to do with the he111 here obviously i'm going to donate this to charity it's going to go off as a prize last year we raised just under three thousand pounds uh, that went to the snap charity um, a brilliant job for you guys doing it this time to make it a little bit fairer and hopefully raise even more money what we're going to have is a system of a raffle so you're going to buy a ticket 
I'm not sure about the price yet. It may be just uh, one pound, it might be two pounds, something else like that uh, per ticket. You can buy as many tickets as you like. And then what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna donate kits, LTM membership, yeah, lifetime membership to Flory Models. Um, as I said, if it's in the UK and within an eight hour round trip for me, I'll deliver it, you know, or you can spend the day here with me and a guest as well as part of the prize. There's loads of things, it's gonna be kits, um, the sales team uh, are going to donate obviously sanders and washes and uh, merchandise as well, uh, various things like that. So we're hoping for another great year uh, for charity for us. They're going to go on sale probably mid next month and so I've got to get it all in position and sorted out and all the bits and pieces sorted for it uh, and try and get some more bits for it if we're honest. But again we did amazingly last year with this one so I'd like to do another one this year and as I say you can win this great HE111. Just remember you're going to need somewhere big to put it or hang it from the ceiling or blow it up which is something we're talking about in a moment. But anyway it's going to be our charity obviously for this year. Great to see it if you would like it or anything else like that then uh, buy as many tickets as you can and so up your chances do you have to mention we have a new section coming in on the forum uh if i get hold of it i should have brought it over um me and sid uh were talking the other day on one of the live shows about we could you know destroy people's models who they don't want them anymore um so um sorry i think it was peter sent us this one i can't remember who sent us this one now um and his sent us his scud this is the trumpeter scud which i've got it got it behind me to review as the kit um but as you say this is his scud which we are going to destroy um on tuesday daytime when sid's up here uh, before the live show so on next week's show you can see us destroying a kit which is, I, we need a new feature i'm going to call it destroy my model or something else like that so it's going back to your childhood so this week we're going to shoot it multiple times with fully automatic weapons um so uh so this will be the this how this little guy is going to go we have thought about sticking a rocket in it and trying to launch the scud but i'm a bit concerned where it ends up uh so uh and things like that so we're going to have a new section called destroy my model so um, lots of fun with that one. So you're not going to want to miss, miss next week's new show uh, where we're going to be destroying this lovely piece of work, which is cringeable because when it turned up, I was like, I can't destroy that. It's perfect. I was expecting when we mentioned it to have horrible models turn up, stuff that you've had kicking around your busters, if you like, that uh, are no more and all the rest of it. And then that turned up and I thought, what's wrong with it? It's perfect. But anyway, he does want us to destroy it. So we will do as we're told and we will destroy it in quite a funny way. As I say, I'm going to get all the cameras outside for this one. Uh, we're going to get the GoPro right up to it close as well and everything else. And then we're going to knock seven bells of hell out of it. All right. Um, so you can wave your model off in style. But if you've got a model you'd like us to destroy, just get in contact and uh, you get it sent to us. And we'll think of a genius way of destroying it for you. Got to be done. Okay, so as promised, we're going to have a quick look now around the forum. Okay then guys, welcome to the forum. Um, sorry it's a little bit all over the place today and uh, sorry about the audio. It's just that I've had a move around in the studio so I haven't got my normal uh, equipment for doing this type of thing. But hopefully you can still hear me. So anyway, into the forum. Thought we'd have a quick dive down to see how things are going. We haven't been in here for a while. So at the moment we've got the Night Fighter uh, builds on the go. So we've got 65 of your builds actually going on right now, which is fantastic. So let's have a quick look at some reveal photos we've got in there. So first up, we've got Ola has done, sorry, it always starts at the wrong page, it starts where I left off, okay, has been doing a fantastic job on the Mosquito, so this is a Tamiya 148, and as you can see, very nice being in the Swedish markings, some nice detail work there, lovely weathering around the exhausts, filler areas, nice canopy seam joints, things like that on there, beautiful work, very, very nice, in something a little bit different, okay, as I say, it's not often you see the sort of Swedish one going around, as you can see, absolutely fantastic. Very nicely done, all of that. No silvering on the decals, anything like that. Beautiful stuff. It's always a right pain to get that one to lay in. I must admit, I tend to um, slit it and then hopefully it lays down a little bit better, but I can understand that one. It can be a right pain. But you can see the classic lines of the Mosquito there, so that is very nice. Okay, then just going back, we've also got here Grant, has done the 109. As I say, this one, if I remember rightly, is the Dragon Kit, which is the biggie, the 132nd, yep. So as you can see, monster kit, this one, really, really big. 
great detail with these engines being uncovered and the gun bays and you know warts and all type of thing nice smoke staining good panel lines lovely in scale chipping i'd call it all the rest of it nice work on the exhaust as well that lovely hint of rust on there really do like that okay some of the inner parts the gun system very nicely done can be quite a complex kit uh, to get right to get it all to line up and everything else but he's done a fantastic job on there really like this weather in the chipping is so better it's lovely it's in scale uh, which is a nice thing and this lovely hint of rusty things going on around it around these areas really does just bring it all to life very nicely done nice with the exhaust staining as well coming back okay you know it's not easy what you're going to put on there when you've actually got a black surface so opting for this sort of rusty brown color works absolutely spot on with that one really do like that one give you a sense of scale you know absolutely fantastic there brilliantly done no he's not a midget okay so yeah absolutely lovely fantastic really do like that some nice clear clean images and it just shows you don't need a massively complicated background i know it's a problem i uh, certainly i had it a photograph in the uh, 111 the he uh and you know he's done it quite nicely there some nice crop shots to get it all in and some overalls you know just clean images all the way through I just love that exhaust work that really is nice and just the chipping on the black as well it's not glaring in your face or anything else like that really really nicely done so up next we've got Jason he's got the Avenger it is the Avenger yes and this is the accurate miniatures the one which I do believe is reboxed by a tallery now as well so if you can't find it again it's it's not an easy kit to work with you're dealing with this blues and the greys so what are you going to use for washes he's decided to go lighter on it and because it's got that sort of bleached out look to it the faded tail the markings really nicely done and that's what we're saying about this is that you know testing trying different things uh, and deciding to go lighter with the bleach markings and a faded down paintwork really has paid off some amazing weathering on these ones guys you've done a, a stunning job but i just love the way that the decals have been faded down brought back really toned them in and everything else like that just to fade them all in and as you can see all the different areas of weathering that is a absolute stunner even down to the canopy work it looks dusty okay and that's what you want you want that effect of grime around these panels and stuff like that and it's worked really really nicely in there so well done for that one jason that's an absolute stonker last up for the finishers at the moment bearing in mind we've only just been going over a month on this we've got that classic is it the rebel yeah, it's the rebel uh 172nd this is the night fighter version of the butcher bird very nicely done not easy with all these aerials on it especially in the smaller scale but again nice in scale weathering paint job things like that making your way through you know it's not an easy thing to do um some nice weathering underneath and as i say getting all these aerials to line up and stay on nightmare great job on that one so on the other group bill we've got the actual uh if i remember rightly we've got quite a few entries coming through now for the kicking up dust where are we there we go so we've got three we've got 113 entries down in here at the moment that really is quite something so we've got three finishes already bearing in mind only be going a while and they're all by colin colin have you done anything else <laughs> absolutely fantastic so we got what is this one this is the howitzer the 122 mil trumpeter 135th scale okay it's a nice detailed job on that one with the gun weathering on the all the plates and the different areas as you can see very nicely done okay and next up from him he's obviously been very busy nice to see a predator that isn't in um, either uk or us markings um, so yeah absolutely the brilliant one on this one we've got the Italian one that was used from sorry get this right Iraq in 2006 okay and as I say this is what we're talking about with this particular group build it can be anything you like so it doesn't just have to be you know your standard type of things you can think a little bit outside the box UAVs artillery you know all the support equipment that goes into these things okay it doesn't just have to be the tanks and aircraft um, you know running around the battlefield so last up from him we've got an SA2 pretty much the Scourge Nightmare Missile um, pretty much at any altitude very nicely done let's say difficult to photograph to get it all in obviously uh, nice little base for it and all the rest of it okay nice little weathering showing there the actual uh, the launcher as well as the missile there we go getting it all in there now as you can see very good on that one 
Well done for those, they're absolutely lovely. If we just have a look at some of the work in progress, who have we got down here? Just gonna pick a few. Obviously, um, you got the guys from the team. Let's just see how they're getting on. I know Steve's pushing through nicely on his. Let's go back up. So Steve's actually doing um, the Merkava, as we've all just, you know, we now know how to say it. Um, and he's got the mine roller with all the other bits and pieces that are going on on this one, okay. So I don't know how much he's put up already. So there we go. He's, this will be a main one on the main site, as will Hans as well. So this is like a, a sneak peek for non-members. So you've got the wheel systems all going through on there. As you can see, he's been working nicely on all the wheels, getting them all tidied up and out of the way, I should think. Okay, so more of the detail gear, putting it together, running right the way through, adding all the bits, the suspensions. It's, they are lovely kits, these kits. They really do go together very, very well. Some of the stowage item on these bag ones on the back, again, all the way through. Sorry about the scrolling, I know a lot of you don't like it but I need to scroll through quick. Okay, uh, update number two. As I say, I'll get these up on the main site so you can have a proper look next week, okay? Um, as well as Stefan's build. I know I'm a bit lax on getting some of those back up from the team. You can see all these little tiny bits going in to make up something absolutely phenomenal, okay? So he remembers what he's got, which is probably a good idea with these side skirts, getting them all in an order. Okay, some more around the rear. Okay, and in there just like that. And if we have a quick sneaky peek, I don't know how far Hans has got with his. Yep, Hans is pushing on nicely with his. Hans is doing the same thing, okay? They're both doing the Merkava uh, with the Rhyme Roller set, as you can see. So Hans is down in here. He's doing a little bit of scratch work, as you can see, some little bits in there just to fill up little bits of gaps. You've got appearing down in there. So he's taking care of that, and he's completely sheeting it out as well. Okay, as you can see, he's doing all the detail work from the inside of the skirts, which no one's going to see, but you know, he knows it's there. That's the main thing. Okay, similar type of state as you can imagine, going all the way through. Again, I'll get Hans's up on the site um, because he assures me he's going to finish it this time. Okay, Sid's Type 45. Uh, I know a lot of you have been following this one quite closely. Uh, as I say, Sid is a new modeler. Everyone has to sort of appreciate how far he's come in such a quick, short amount of time. Um, so he's taking care of all the gaps and the various bits and pieces, as you can see down on here. I'll get Sid to bring us along to the live show. You can see it. Molly Bobs. Don't mention underlaying the carpet. Okay, so as you can see, the bridge section going in, looking all very nice and good. And I say, working with the photo etch, the various different things as you can imagine as he goes through obviously he's got his dogs around and then I think he's got another update in here yeah there we go so again sanding back taking care of all the joins all the gaps on this one let's face it there is a few okay all the way around it and putting it together great work on this well done mate fantastic and if we just pick one more last one, who shall we have? Let's have something a little bit different. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Okay, seeing as this is a review this week, I don't know how far he's got on this. Uh, just into the wheels at the moment. At least you can see I read all your posts. Okay, this is uh, Richard Chapman. He's doing, this is the one, is this the one with the interior? Uh, Slightly different version to the one that we've got in the review this week, actually. I thought it was the same. It's not. Um, uh, Busk stands for something urban warfare, something or other set on it. I can't remember what Busk stands for now. But it's basically all this chubba of modular armor on here and the urban kit that they actually had as an upgrade. I can't remember what the acronym for that one is off the top of my head. Um, oh, that's right. Bradley Urban Stability Kit. Busk, that's what it is. Richard's thing in there, so he's following along with that build. Again, these little road wheels and taking your time going through it all. Road wheels, the scourge of tank guys. Okay, and all the rest of it. As you can see, tons of stuff on doing all the road wheels and he'll be pushing ahead really quickly on that one. As you can see down here, we've got loads of entries. There's 113 entries into this group build. Lots of different stuff. Tons and tons and tons of different type of things, right the way through to uh, Peter Fox doing something a little bit different, as I say. Greek hoplite, okay. 
from the fourth century. So that's what we're talking about this. It can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, you know, modern. You can go anything in time. Um, I don't know if I also got in here, just off the top of my head. De -de -de -de. Uh, sorry, it's just fine if we find something else a little bit interesting. Um, we've got Ben, which we'll be seeing soon. He's going to be doing Sniper, okay? So little diorama figures. So don't forget all your figure painters. You can really get into this one. Got loads of stuff going on with this one. Okay, so there we go. That is the quick look around the forum. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks and we'll have a look at some more of your great work. Okay, so there we go. Some great work going on there. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Remember guys, keep your pictures as many as you can, as clear as you can and then we can use them elsewhere on the site and various things like that. Remember, you can enter as many times as you like pretty much open to everything as well. I don't think as many things we've said, no, you can't do that to this one. <laughs> so most things have been used somewhere it's sandy and dusty in the world. Okay, so, you know, as I said, get involved with it, get your work down, get your build threads in there and everything else like that. We've got loads of great reviews for you still to come. I've got to mention some of the guys have sent me some massive, brilliant kits. First up, we've got a kit review coming this week, been sent to me. We've got the Matador, something a little bit different, absolutely fantastic. There's a backstory to this one as well, because uh, one of our guys happens to know the owner of one, which is fantastic. So he sent me some all of those bits and pieces, so reviewing that. We've also got in, Neil sent me his, because I wouldn't do one, not in a million years. We're talking big kits, this thing's bigger than that, okay. This is the actual, the Felix Stowe, is this the late one? Yeah, this is the late version, they do an early and a late version of this one. Yes, this, this is the Wingnut Wings, 200 and what, almost 50 quid I think in the UK. A little bit cheaper if you get it imported. Um, but yeah, this is the massive one. So we've got this one coming up next week as well. As well as we have oh, more kits. Shannon sent me down. I got his Shelby, which I love. Uh, so we've got that one coming in. Plus the fact, as I say, we've got the Trumpeter we spoke about last week. We've got Trumpeter's uh, A6 Intruder, the 32nd one. This is the E tram version. And we've got the Scud which is this as the kit to do as a review. So lots of fun with that one. And I've got the Trumpeter EA618G Growler in 30 seconds as well. Plus I've got other kits as well, which I've just noticed I'm looking around that I need to review for you as well. So I've got plenty of reviews for you to come and everything else like that. So that's basically it for this week. Um, I'm gonna carry on now, uh, get this all edited up to you and then I'm gonna be doing all the photo etch work cracking on with the Jaguar. Then we're gonna be working on the actual, the Sherman for the EZ8 and everything else like that. So plenty to come up. Thank you for all your kind feedback and everything recently as well. It's much appreciated. Okay, so I'm going to leave you now with something from me for a change. So I'm going to leave you with the pictures from the Heinkel. Uh, this is the HE111P kit, 30 second, massive monster, which is up for raffle. <laughs> <laughs>